Hello and welcome to our back to school night at Glasgow Middle School. I just want to take a quick moment to thank you all for being here. Um, despite what I'm sure you, is a busy schedule for all of you um, and this, not just the students but the parents as well. Uh, so thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to inform you guys on some options available to you. So if you find that later you could use some closed caption translation of this video or the information presented in this video, please know that that's available through YouTube in multiple languages. By following the steps below, you can access the language you need. Um, you will click the settings icon at the bottom of the video screen, then click subtitles or closed captions, click auto translate and then select the language that you need. So welcome to science, science seven to be specific. Uh, my name is Miss Honeycutt and I'm really happy to be here today. So a little about me, something that's really important to know is I, I am a part-time sub for Miss Mamaro. Um, I will be here for the entirety of the semester. Um, she will be coming back in December. Um, so there will be a little bit of a transition come December, but until then I am filling in for her. So if you see on your kids' schedules that they are supposed to be with Ms. Mamaro, um, and then you find me there instead, please know that that is not a mistake. Um, I am Ms. Honeycutt and I am filling in for Ms. Mamaro. I am originally from North Carolina. I love to be outside. I have taught in Guatemala. I love art and I am fascinated by art history. In my free time, I like to sing and write music. Um, something else that's probably important to know is I um, received my education at Liberty University and I am now receiving my master's um, in education and uh, with a focus in secondary education and TESOL. To summarize a few things that I believe to be true about the way that students learn best and the things that they need to do in order to be successful in the classroom. So I believe that students learn best when they are learning through firsthand experience, when they feel comfortable making mistakes and asking questions, when they are interested in the topics being discussed, and when they have space to analyze and to think critically about these topics. These are all values that I hold very dearly and things that I actively try to incorporate into teaching, even virtually. I know a lot of you might be asking, how do they learn through firsthand experience virtually? Um, the science team is very proactive in trying to incorporate experiments and live experiments. Um, and something I'm really excited about this coming up semester is having students do these experiments in their own home. Of course, it will be completely safe. None of the um, chemicals or anything we'll be using will be harmful and they will all be things accessible to everyone. Um, we'll make sure that they are accessible before putting any experiments together. Um, but um, that I am really excited to be able to share in this experiential learning with, with our students. Um, in order to be successful, students will need to attend and participate in online activities. Um, they'll need to participate in class discussion by turning on their mics and discussing in groups. They will need to complete the classwork. And of course, contact me if they have any questions or if they need help. So one of the things that we really want to advocate for, not just for the sake of learning, but for the sake of building community in our classrooms, is that students are turning their microphones on. This helps them grow to know each other better. Um, it helps them know who they will work well with in coming up projects and group projects. Um, so if you guys, the adults, can help us advocate for students to use their microphones and maybe even their video if you get really crazy, that'd be awesome. Um, that is not required. However, we really want to push for students to use their microphones this year. The chat box is a very easy feature to use, um, but I just, I, we really believe that it's going to help build at least a similar sense of classroom community that they would get inside of an actual classroom. Curriculum. So these are what our units are going to look like this year. We're going to have five different units um, this semester, rather. 
Um, first unit is going to be on ecosystems. Then we're going to go over natural selection and adaptions, genetics, cells, and then classification. Just a quick summary on the grading and assessments. We have a few different types of assessments. The first is a formative. And these are just checks for understanding during the learning process. So these will happen during the class time. Summative assessments are judgments about what content and skills were learned. So these are the more formal assessments, the ones they'll be getting through their exit tickets and their tests and quizzes. Uh, through feedback about how your student is um, organized and behaving in school. And this will be on the report card. Um, and we'll also do our best to keep our students on track through emails um, and Google Classroom, all of those platforms. Um, and this, of course, includes accountability with asynchronous work and uh, the homework that we assign during the class. Teacher support. Um, so the uh, assignments like asynchronous work, um, as well as the grids for the week and looking forward, all the information you're going to need will be available on Blackboard 24-7 and on Google Classroom. Uh, you should also know that I have available office hours on Mondays from 7.30 to 8.30. And then in, um, on Wednesdays after school, I'm also available from 2.30 to 3.30. Um, so my office hours will be posted on both Google Classroom and Blackboard along with the syllabus, the con my contact information, my email, um, and of course the grid um, explaining what we're looking forward to for the week. Google Classroom will have many of the same resources available. Um, and if you have any questions about either one of these platforms and how to access them, please feel free to email me at either one of these emails below. Um, I am more likely to, I like to try to keep my parents' emails and student emails separate. Um, so if you're a student, I would suggest using the .NET email. If you're a parent, I would suggest please using the .edu email. Supporting your child. So here's some things you can do to help us um, support your child in learning at home. You can ask, what are you learning in class? Show me your grid. And this is just a way to let the students know what is coming up, um, keeping them accountable and having them take ownership of the things that they're learning. And of course, with homework, what assignments do you have to do? What do you need to complete them? Let's look at your grid together. I think this is a great opportunity, though it might not be the most convenient for everyone. Learning at home gives the parents an opportunity to learn with their students. And I think that's a really special thing. And I think that's something that um, if able, um, can try uh, valuing um, this, this semester and prioritizing. And I think it's gonna make the Glasgow community stronger as a whole. Here's some supplies that your students will need um, this coming up semester. One's pens and pencils, uh, the Glasgow Middle School agenda, paper, notebook to jot down ideas or notes, and then of course an FCPS um, computer. Um, if you have any issues with your computer, you can contact the, um, the IT office and you can find their information on our website. We're looking forward to a great year. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for being here. And we are so excited to learn and grow together.